Ah, it's working. Hey, old man, what do you think? Isn't that pretty neat? Yeah, I guess so. It's fire of orange, right? Hey, could you get the thing that's coming out of the printer? All right, can you hold it up to your face? Hey. <laughs> hey, what, hey, what's that cord connected to? Huh? Well, what is this connected to? It's connected to a freaking heat gun over there. Yeah, turns out this is all a joke. This is just an elaborate ruse. Uh, these make about one volt of current, or of, of one volt of uh, electricity, and very, very, very limited current. So obviously this would never work. This is just a dumb joke. Um, but hey, ever since I've seen those, uh, actually, here, you take this camera. Okay, ever since like uh, middle school and maybe even elementary, you've ever, you've probably seen those experiments where people have stuck a nail and a penny in a lemon and got current, like power, like an LED or a calculator. Well, I've always wondered. That's technically just like a, a galvanic uh, battery. So what happens if you were to take the electrodes or the um, the cathode, the anode, and throw them in the ocean and build a boat around it? So I made this. Ooh, look at this. Ooh, a peacock feather. Ooh. Look, a peacock. It's a peacock. <laughs> Very scary. <laughs> Look at that, Mom. Here, hold it out like this. Mm -hmm. Like this and film you and me. Okay, Mom, where are we? I don't know. We're in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, but I don't know where we are. Okay, well, it's somewhere much warmer. It, it tilt the camera towards me. Yes. But I should probably explain what's going on here. So, I have the boat. It's done now. I see some fish. Alright, I'm gonna have to take this. 
Okay, so let me quickly explain what's going on here. So basically we have a battery that works through ionic chemistry. Basically we have two electrodes that are made up of two different metals, one magnesium and one uh, graphite. And when you put them in the uh, electrolytic solution, you get a current and voltage that goes through them. Now I did find a chart online that showed me that magnesium and the graphite have the greatest voltage potential to do uh, work. Okay, while doing some initial experimentation, I found out this battery really sucks. The internal resistance is super high, meaning when I try to draw some amperage out of the battery, the voltage rapidly drops off. So that's why I put all the cells in the battery to kind of get more gas out of the water. Uh, I did it. I did test it in parallel, and uh, that's why the boat is kind of designed the way it is, because uh, you can literally just throw it in seawater and watch it run. But enough about the boat. Uh, we should probably test it out first, but before we do that... Well, a lot of you guys have asked, what's your education level? Did you go to high school? Did you just uh, have a little college? Or what kind of degree do you have? Well, truthfully, I went to school for commercial aviation, but I didn't really quite finish that because I really wanted to switch majors. So I did try an engineering degree. I didn't fare so well in a super formal education setting. So I ended up uh, leaving in favor of more self-education through various sources like YouTube, because I wanted to understand problem solving through tinkering rather than listen to a lecture on simply problem solving. Well, no matter how you learn, it's important to have a good understanding of what's going on. I have built up a mental toolbox of concepts that offer me a head start when tackling projects rather than starting from scratch. This is why I'm happy to announce that Brilliant.org, a problem solving website, is helping me bring more videos to you guys. Out of the many numerous courses and lessons, I've been enjoying the everyday physics courses as I love expanding my mental toolbox of essential knowledge of the everyday as much as I utilize these in my mini projects. I also love how they provide detailed explanations when I get the question wrong to get it right the next time. Having this knowledge is invaluable. It's why I complete projects such as this ship on the first go. Because I figured out the correct water line by taking into account the displacement of the hull versus the weight of the magnesium, plastic, and graphite instead of simply just throwing it out there and hoping it floats. Okay, well, let's wrap this up. To support your lifeline education and learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash people and sign up for free. The first 77 people that sign up will get 20% off the annual premium subscription and that's all I have for you guys. Back to the video. What did you guys think I was going to do? Make you 55 minutes of uh, boat b-roll? Well, let's talk about the project. Initially, when I designed the boat, it was really designed to be run in parallel. That's why there's holes in the back in the uh, boat and on through the side of the hulls. Mainly, the idea with that was to ingest fresh seawater and to keep the reaction going. Because if you really let this thing sit in a closed uh, cell, what happens is I believe doing some research, magnesium hydroxide forms on the anode surface and prevents the uh, the uh, process from happening yeah so you generally lose all your voltage and amps and you stall in the water after i think it's about probably 10 minutes or so but what i found out through doing even more research was if you add some hydrogen peroxide it helps the oxidation process go on throughout the anode and it keeps the bulk of magnesium hydroxide to stop forming around the surface of the anode so you continue to get current now when i try this at home i actually got about 24 hours of continuous power out of it and it was still even going so I think in this configuration it would still continue to run and this is honestly the best configuration for this because uh, it's running in series right now and it's got this stuff in there and so it should kind of continuously run at least until I don't know maybe it crashes or fills up with more salt water and the salt water displaces the uh, hydrogen peroxide inside the boat. 
Also, I did a little bit of test runs in a pool, which you guys can kind of see here versus just fresh straight up pool water, which probably is pissing it. Uh, some salt water and then the salt water with the addition of hydrogen peroxide. So I hope you guys learned something. I had a lot of fun with it. It's kind of a boring project, I guess, but it's interesting because I've always wanted to test this theory out ever since seeing a popular science uh, article on it back in uh, 1950 something. Some guy actually had an idea to build an oil tanker with uh, the same principle going on inside of it. I, think, I, I don't think it was graphite and magnesium. I think it was zinc. It was zinc and maybe graphite. Any, anyways, I'll post a screen cap right here, which you guys can see. And uh, that's it for the video. I hope you guys learned something, and I'll see you in the next one.